a view from the outside. Join Brayton Horn at 7.30 a.m. every Saturday on Nice Radio for A View from the Outside. If society need a spectacle, it might help us to see some evil. If society need a spectacle, It's the 10th day in the month of Christmas 2016, as we say. Uh, we thought we had Britain on the line. Britain, give us a call again. the Magic Jack again. Good morning to you, Britain. Good morning, Randy. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to hear you this morning. How is it in the United Kingdom? Yes, good to hear you too. Good to be back after last week's absence. As um, as you know, I was out. Um, I was I, I was at the um, Criminal Bar Association's Winter Conference, and um, so hence I wasn't able to um, present the program live and direct, so to speak. You know, some very interesting topics were discussed, you know, topics like domestic violence, sexual offences, and, and, and the like. So it was a very, it was a very um, edifying conference, put it that way. In the United Kingdom, Randy, at, at this moment, it's, it's pretty good in the sense that the weather is it, not too cold. It's 11.31 um, in the morning, in, in the AM, that is, and um, the weather is... It's overcast heavily. In fact, some would describe describe it as murky. Uh, temperature is relatively warm for this time of year. It's 13 degrees Celsius, approximately 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, let me say good morning to all of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to all of Nice Radio everywhere. I want to say good morning to um, somebody I met earlier in the week, somebody um, I met in court, actually, a barrister that we were we were talking and I told him about the program. He's not been sanctioned by uh, at all, and uh, but he promised that he'll be listening. So, Mr. Mr. Uh, Claxton, if you are listening, good morning to you, on of you from the outside. Yes, Randy. So, how are you after all that? <laughs> I'm doing very good, very good. It's the Christmas season. It's beginning to um to feel a little like Christmas. My job is to make it feel much more like Christmas. So that's what I'm working on. Well, I'll tell you what, um, having listened to your music, your Christmas music, all the parang and everything, you are definitely um, ushering in the Christmas mood. So, Well, at least I, I feel it from the distance, so I hope that the people at home feel it even closer. And I'm also doing my television program. I've got Vibes Cribbing back up and running. We were up last evening at 8.30 on SVG TV. And we've got back-to-back episodes on Sunday afternoon from 2 to 3, also on SVG TV. So um, I'm doing my bit both on radio and television. Excellent. That's very good. I remember we made some um, we made some strides with with, with Vibes Caribbean in the UK. Maybe we have to um, have talks about resurrecting, you know, our our, our efforts to try to get it um, extended to these parts. All right, because um, that, that, you, you're quite right. Because um, in the new year, 2017, yes, we'll be um, going back onto the international market. We took a time out. We've been off about two to three yeah. years, and we're just doing the yeah. Christmas season here. But we'll be back up and running next year. Great, great. So we, we, I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, Randy, um, on a view from the outside this week, uh, we are going to take a look at police brutality. With the view being 
that it is imperative for the police in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to stem police brutality in the country. There is a video which has gone viral. The hits are numerous on social media sites, in particular on Facebook. It shows a man on the side of the road being beaten mercilessly by what appeared to be a baton. This merciless beating was being carried out even as people were passing up and down and carrying on their, li their, li their normal life in an ordinary, normal way. It is unbelievable how desensitized they seemed. The beating was carried out by a male using what appeared to be a hard, shiny object, some say a baton in the form of a, of a metal pole. He was dressed in civilian clothing. He struck the man incessantly and mercilessly, and it appeared that at the very least, one of his other colleagues stood by without having made any visible intervention. Throughout the episode, the man being beaten remained defenseless, with no apparent physical retaliation. It is reported that the perpetrator of the merciless attack is a police officer who was in plain clothes. The viewing of the video is alarming, frightening, and sickening to the core. It is so reminiscent of the brutal beating that Rodney King received from the Los Angeles police on the 3rd of March, 1991. And those who have seen that video remember well how the world, the entire world, was shocked to the core at what happened. How on earth, the question is asked, can someone, in particular a police officer, in today's St. Vincent and the Grenadines, beat another in such a senseless way. Nothing could justify such brutal onslaught. Nothing. Not even if the man that was being beaten is a vagrant or he is mentally ill. In fact, if he is a vagrant and or is mentally ill, that means that he's vulnerable. And so, there is more of an overriding duty to protect him. Surely, something has got to be done to protect the citizens of the country, to protect them from those who are charged with the responsibility to protect and to serve. Yes, it is time that the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines receive the protection of the state. Those in authority must respond to protect Vincentians and others too, and at the same time, try to protect the name of the country, if its name is not already being tarnished forever, of course. When the police themselves contribute to a breakdown in law and order, families are ripped apart and violence can ensue. A view from the outside hopes that the beaten man has no long lasting permanent injuries, although he will, of course, be psychologically affected for a long time. We wish him well going forward. Police brutality is defined as the excessive and or unnecessary force by police when dealing with civilians. Excessive use of force means a force well beyond what is necessary in order to handle a situation. No doubt, against the background of that definition, viewers of the video will make up their own minds about the force displayed. In fact, many of the comments have expressed horror and revulsion. With that video of such brutality having surfaced, and with the previous instance of police officers, of the police officers who were reinstated 
after having been convicted for having brutally beaten a youth in a merciless way while he was in custody, one wonders whether those in authority will heed the clarion call to act to protect the citizens and others too. People are losing faith in the expectation of such protection. How can those in authority offer such protection when they themselves are the ones who removed from the law books one of the major safeguards which offered such protection against police brutality? It was they who abolished PACE. PACE, as many would know, is the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. It served as a major check and balance to regulate the behavior of the police. In fact, under the English legal system, where PACE, is cur where PACE currently plays a major role in the criminal justice system, the police, under Section 117, are entitled to use reasonable force in dealing with the situation. The moment that force moves from the realms of reasonable to excessive, that police officer becomes the subject of discipline and possible prosecution. Why then did those in authority remove such a vital piece of legal protection? One could only hope that there is nothing sinister in such a move. If there is, then the chickens are coming home to roost and one will be justified in wondering what else lies beneath. St. Vincent and the Grenadines cannot continue to exist like this. Such existence leaves the country's image in tatters, an image which is seen near and far by those who look on from, with, from inside and from outside of the country. People are already less trusting of the police because they see the escalation in serious crimes in the country. They already feel that the police no longer protect them. Now, the last thing in the world they want to see is the police themselves contributing to their fear and concern. As Mary Frances Berry, author, professor, and former chairwoman of the United States Commission on Civil Rights once said, when you have police officers who abuse citizens, you erode public confidence in law enforcement. The people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and others too now need from those in authority, they need action. They do not need any window dressing exercise. They do not need any verbose speeches with grandiose and flowery rhetoric, which in the end and in the stark light of day leave them empty. The people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and others too need protection, and they must get it. It must be given to them in order to avoid a total breakdown. Those in authority need to put measures in place to ensure that the police carry out their mandate to protect and to serve. It is vital that they put measures in place for the very survival of the country. Those in authority need to make those decisions. And whilst they're doing so, they will be well advised to keep in mind the words of the American civil rights activist Al Sharpton, who said and asked, many in our community have to live in fear of both cops and robbers. What concrete steps would you take to end police brutality? Until next week, Randy, this is Britton Horn with a view from the outside and reminding our listeners to send feedback to a view from the outside at hotmail.com. That's a view from the outside at hotmail.com. Randy, have a very good day.
have a an excellent, enjoyable weekend and have a productive week ahead. All the best to you and all of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Britton Horn. Thank you, Randy. All the best to you.